Hey, Shadow, you okay? Find the computer room! <laughs> the bigger question is, what on earth happened to Shadow the Hedgehog? Now, don't get me wrong, the mainline Sonic series has always been a little inconsistent to say the least, albeit this game is just all over the place. The critics did not like it either, no siree. The game's designer, Takashi Izuka, said in an IGN interview, we wanted to expand the Sonic franchise by offering a more mature game with features that have never been possible before in a Sonic game. Hence, not only is this title drenched in the angstiest of early 2000s teen angst, but it's also the reason why Shadow utters the word damn it a lot, because apparently that's what a mature game is all about. Gunshots everywhere. Another one. Another one. Another one. And another one. Now, the big selling point was the morality decisions that determined which branching pathway Shadow would take. As in that same interview with IGN, Izuka claimed that Shadow is a true rebel and is extremely mysterious. <laughs> Though the whole foundation of this setup was that the player must help Shadow remember and aid him through his journey as he struggles to discover his true meaning, utilizing the knowledge from previous runs to arrive at one singular truth. But wait, since they don't address any past playthroughs of the story whatsoever, does that mean they were utterly meaningless? You know what, it's probably not worth losing brain cells over. Although apart from which route Shadow takes, the branching pathways or decisions made ultimately do not matter. As you move from stage to stage, it's like everyone seems to conveniently forget what happened just moments ago. Do you not care that I slaughtered about 45 of your derpy little minions? Well, apparently not. You all just like to yell at Shadow, clearly. <laughs> Oddly enough, at certain points in the game, a character will be like, don't attack our friends, or Shadow, stop! Though taking them down is actually required to progress, which makes their appeals fall like a sack of potatoes. But to be blunt, the most infuriating part about Shadow the Hedgehog is that in order to reach the last story, the canon final segment of the game, you have to play through the same stages over and over and over and complete the beginning level Westopolis at least 10 times minimum. What the... This could have so easily been fixed with a chapter select feature, but no. The devs obviously think you're a masochist too. Thank goodness these cutscenes are skippable after the first viewing, because there's no damn way I'd ever watch that opening FMV 10 times, even though it does look really nice. But don't worry, I made sure to use all the cheapest moves in the book to blitz through this game. Like gunning it for the invincibility power-ups for unlimited ammo. Yep, this game was not gonna bring me down. Especially since you can fail objectives like blowing up this annoying tank, or accidentally touch a goal ring and move on to a completely different story path. Not something you want happening on later playthroughs if you want your sanity intact. <laughs> that being said, when it comes to the main story about amnesia and an evil alien Dementor called Black Doom, you can't exactly take it seriously. Finally, I've got all the Chaos Emeralds. I made you, and this is how you repay me? I am Shadow Android, the ultimate battle life form created by Eggman. You may have created me, Doctor, but I will now lead this empire and androids will rule! This is who I am! Eggman, target acquired. Locked and loaded. Fire. What? Goodbye, Doctor. Die. Why did they want to focus a game entirely on Mr. Rocket Skates here? Well, allegedly, it was due to the fans. Thanks to the folks over at Sonic Retro, we can view a poll that Sega ran in 2005 to ask fans about which of their favorite characters should receive a game exclusively dedicated to them. And look at these names. Knuckles, Fury Fists, Shadow, Renegade with a cause. Dr. Eggman, the world is not enough? What is this, 007? What's happening here? <laughs> Although, as we see before us, they ultimately went with Shadow the Hedgehog. Fair enough. Albeit, as far as I'm aware, the results of this poll haven't been made public. 
However, according to a press release from Sega in 2005, Takashi Izuka explained, Since we first introduced him in Sonic Adventure 2, we have wanted to feature Shadow in his own game. So this poll was probably meant for validation from the fans more than anything. What's really ironic though, is that in this same press release I mentioned before, then Sega of America's Vice President of Marketing, Scott A. Steinberg said, We expect Shadow the Hedgehog to be a cornerstone title, as well as a new and dynamic brand for Sega. Yeah, that definitely panned out well. Good job there. Surprisingly, the game somehow, somehow managed to sell over 2 million copies, which was pretty close to Sonic Adventure 2. That said, if you're a long-time fan like me, it was most likely a case of morbid curiosity. Like stumbling upon a car crash wreckage, it's hard to look away here. Though to be frank, as CBR puts it, it's easy to get lost in what didn't work with Shadow the Hedgehog and forget that this was a tough period of transition in general for Sega. That is very true. May I remind you all what came out the very next year? Chaos Control! It's no use! Back to the story, one thing I do like is how the game gives you a little recap whenever you reload from the main menu. I can't count the number of times I've revisited a game after putting it down for 3,000 years and have completely forgotten what's happened, only to spend a full hour trying to figure out what's going on. So there is that. In terms of voice acting, it's honestly not bad all around, I must admit. Aside from some awkwardly delivered lines, Shadow sounds exactly as you'd imagine, all angsty and fueled with Linkin Park energy. However, it is impressive how well Jason Griffith doubled as the main protag in Sonic. I wasn't even aware he acted as both characters until I looked it up, which speaks volumes. Plus, it'd be a crime not to mention the one and only... Where's that damn fourth Chaos Emerald? Absolute cold. In a similar vein, that's one of the main reasons why this game feels like a massive chore. Almost every single hero and dark mission has you finding, curing, or eliminating some sort of object. So instead of trying to speed through the stage, like, you know, almost every other Sonic game, you instead end up constantly stop-starting all over the place, backtracking and teleporting between checkpoints as you look for the one missing thing you need, like a tan-coloured needle in a haystack. In addition, some of these stages are ridiculously long, with winding paths and several floors that need to be searched from top to bottom. Now, who thought this was a good idea for a game about going fast? Speaking of pace breakers... While I appreciate the cool visuals and how it can clear entire areas of enemies and collectibles, the Chaos Blast animation takes about 5 seconds to execute as Shadow unleashes destructive energy on the spot. Again, slowing down the game to a crawl with a formula that already loves to slam its foot on the brakes every moment it gets. Even when you're just trying to sprint for the goal ring, the game's like, So, I hear you enjoy inconveniently placed geometry? Well, here you go. Oh man, don't even get me started on the cars and motorbikes that are slower and clunkier than Shadow's regular movements. While some of the vehicles are somewhat cool to use, they all feel like they've forgotten what power steering is. Am I supposed to smash into the walls all Sonic Pinball style? Cause I'll do it. But seriously, at least when you stop to throw those scripted slabs of rubble, it only takes about a second or two until you're back up and running. Uh, skating, in this case. <laughs> To avoid some of the awkwardness though, you can, to a degree, plan out the use of Shadow's Chaos Control. This lets him blaze through parts of the level and even get an extra bit of juice out of it if players let loose over a chasm or locked door scenario. Yet again, since most missions require you to carefully search stages up, down, sideways and around the twist, you'll consciously refrain from activating Chaos Control. However, it does slow down boss encounters while granting Shadow temporary invincibility and unlimited ammo in his My Body Is Ready state or whatever you call it, which can be handy dandy. Overall, the level design is not as bad as I remember, it just feels very slapped together a lot of the time. But apart from the game's annoying stop-starting nature and a handful of overly drawn-out missions, some of the little detours you can take in certain levels are actually pretty decent. Funnily enough, the ones that prioritize speed are the most entertaining. Who would have thought? That being said, the camera is the game's worst enemy at times. For example, look at this spring jump that assumes you'll land safely on the grind rail beneath. It seems straightforward enough, 
but lining it up properly is stupidly difficult, as any slight wobble of the camera will throw off your sense of space immediately. It's obvious that the devs reused a lot of the same assets and a similar physics engine from Sonic Heroes as well, though strangely enough, they removed that neat little ability that lets you bouncy bounce on the same enemy until they're defeated. Plus, the homing attack just isn't as satisfying or accurate. Look at this absolute nonsense. Hit the button! Oh boy, these slippery controls never feel quite right, and what on earth was that? How are you supposed to hit anyone with those stubby little T-Rex arms, Shadow? Uh, here's your answer. Don't. Just spam the fire button until something connects. That's all you can really do. The problem is, we always get a hodgepodge of physics and controls that change from game to game in the Sonic series. And of course, Shadow the Hedgehog is no different. And before you even think it, yes, I know, it's not a Sonic game. But aside from the edgy story, branching pathways, Pew Pew Kachu gunplay, and turret sections, ugh, it generally does follow the usual Sonic formula we're familiar with. Only, no way near as well as it should have. Except for the music. The Seeker sound team slapped us like a freight truck here. was tight! Johnny Giawali of Crush 40 fame was asked about the heaviness of Shadow the Hedgehog's soundtrack compared to other Sonic titles and said, I was nervous about this actually. I didn't quite understand what Sega was doing with this experiment, but it worked so well, and I wholeheartedly agree. All things considered, it's definitely the saving grace of this doomed ship, pun intended. If only they put the same amount of effort into the audio mixing, because man, the characters love to cut each other off at every chance they get. The expert. Hey Shadow, long time no see. And chaos emerald, you can unlock unlimited help. You know what? That sums up the game nicely. Stumbling over itself. Yep. Well, if you want to see more goofy shenanigans from us, be sure to check out Sam and I's exclusive member-only podcast over on Patreon. Here is a very terrible weapon. If you can do it with this, you are a veteran of this game. So we like, will bow down addition, to you. But, but exactly. But really yeah. just it was so random when I came across, I was like, oh, umbrella. Why is this here? And then I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. that's, that's what it's serving. This is to go look at me. I, I platinum games. I get the trophy that says, oh, you umbrellaed the game. That kind of, <laughs> that kind of crowd.